Hi, and welcome to How to Write a Book and Get the Darn Thing Published this year. This is Debbie Dashinger. This is uh, webinar number two. If you did not watch the first webinar, I highly recommend that you check it out. Um, hopefully you're on my mailing list because that was sent out, the replay, uh, by request. I had quite a few people who wrote to me, some people from Malaysia and countries where they could not attend live, and they asked if I could send the replay. So definitely check your email because these are gonna be really different webinars. And I just wanna welcome you warmly to the class. I'm thrilled to have you here. I'm calling it a class. I don't know quite <laughs> that's what it is, but this gathering of people who have in their heart of hearts this desire to put out something, a message, a story, a way for you to communicate, it's really a calling, this I know. People don't just suddenly come by this. Occasionally you'll have somebody who comes and says, oh, you know, I wanna do it because it's a business calling book. Okay, you know, of course you can do that if that's your MO. And that's something that basically will take a piece of your business and it will break it down so you're writing a book as though it's modules and sending that, that out. Sometimes people in real estate, for instance, will have their own book because it helps people understand the house buying business and at the same time, it makes potential clients very attractive to them in order to work with them. However, the majority of people, certainly that I work with, come to this because it's just a calling, right? It's something in your belly that says, I'm ready to be birthed out of you. I've got some kind of story to tell. I've got some kind of message. I've got some kind of wisdom by virtue of what I've been through. And it's my time. And this is auspicious, would not you say? <laughs> it's a really incredible time we're living through. And I am finding more people than ever before are wanting to take that creative energy that they're sitting on while they're being quarantined and really use it to put it out. I say, stand for your greatness. And I say that this is that time. It makes sense a lot of people are feeling this calling because in six months, what are you gonna have to show for it? Will this be your baby that gets birthed out into the world? And you look back and you, you can say, wow, Look what I did that time during quarantine. Now, hopefully you're doing many other things of spiritual nature because I find this to be a very profound time and I could do a whole talk on that, but I did that yesterday for 90 minutes in a mastermind. But this is really about you, your words, your book, your ideas, your creativity and getting it out. So I'm gonna just talk <clears throat> and give you ideas, ways to move you forward, but I also want you to know this is very interactive. So I would ask you, you can chat, of course, but mainly I'm going to be focused on you here, so I won't have a lot of uh, attention going back and forth. And so as, as we go along with this, you know, if there's something that comes up for you, write it down, and I will absolutely address your questions. There's going to be a live Q&A at the end. This is quick, right? This is only 60 minutes, so you got me for 60 minutes in heaven, baby, so use me. Use my, uh, use my wisdom, if you will, or my expertise in this area. And so let me introduce myself. I am Debbie Dashinger. I run Dare to Dream Knockout Training Podcast and Programs. And I am known out in the world as a media authority or a visibility shaman. I run a visibility hub. It has uh, pieces that allow spiritual entrepreneurs to get out there because it's our time, right? It, to allow the message to be received and get a lot of great exposure. One of the ways I do that is through book coaching. So I've got a lot of private clients who hire me and it is really an amazing journey for both of us to take from idea of a book to completion and publication. The second hub of the visibility that I run is the international best-selling book launch, which is a guarantee for the author, and it is something I do fully. So the author can just show up and do their brilliance. I handle the entire launch, guarantee my services, and that's their next piece. 
Those people who take all the time to write a book, and it's work, it is work, right? But it's a labor of love. But once you do that, 5% of every book is the writing. 95% of the book is what you do or do not do after the book is written, write, written. And that's why the marketing piece is so, so, so important. It must be a part of your timeline as an author. Do not wait till you get to the finish of your book. That's not a right timeline. These are concurrent. You need to be about 50% of the book done, 50 to 65, and that's when you already know the marketing team you're gonna hire, you start bringing them aboard, you start working with them, because as you're finishing up these pieces, they're working in the background and they're ready for you, getting you on the calendar to launch your book. The third piece of the visibility hub is called the ultimate visibility formula. And that is where I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcast and get really great results. And that's sort of the most important piece of it because people can get booked on small shows and they can get booked um, on a lot of programs that may not be their right audience, but when they are an author and they become an international best-selling author, the next piece is you get interviewed and you get on the shows where you're gonna get results. Results mean, fill workshops, fill Zooms, get paid, collaborations, get invited to speak on stage, and there's a component in there which is what is your dream? Favorite place for me to start with clients. First question I ever ask, what's the dream? What don't you have in your life? What is it you want to create? That's where we start, right? That's where we start. So I know what their vision is and we can align them strategically so that they're on the path to creating that. And then of course, after that, there are pieces like retreats and so forth to work with me in really intimate group settings. All of these are available online, by the way. I've got a wonderful platform. So should you want to engage in any of these at your own pace, whether it's the coaching to write your book or otherwise, they're available online. Ultimate Visibility, I offer twice a year live with me. Really worth it. Six-week online course with me live. And um, right now, I've got book coaching on a platform for a membership that you can, uh, I would absolutely go to and check out and register for if you want to write a book and you want to be helped. It's debbie-shinger.com slash visible visionaries. Spell my name right. <laughs> so you get in there. And uh, I'll talk more about that later so you understand what options there are for you if you are ready to move forward. So let's talk about books. And some of the things that I see over the many years I've been doing this is ways that authors get in their own way or potential authors get in their own way. I'm, I'm just scanning my files because I have a couple of them that I would urge you to avoid. So if somebody else's foibles help you to create a lot of ease in your space, that would be awesome. A lot of people sort of throw pasta at the wall. So they get a little bit of information here and there and they attach to all these little bits of information. Oh, I think I need to get um, someone to design the inside of my book. And oh, I think I need to um, just, you know, start writing and, and, and I'll sort of see where it goes. But I actually haven't, I'm not writing in a formatted book. And I don't even know what a formatted book is. And then they try to handle the formats at the end. Oh, I think I'll pay for this and that, or I think I'll just try to figure it out on my own. And these are the people who often will end up really frustrated with the process because it feels very overwhelming, way too much, and they're not really sure what they're doing. So they're sort of doing a lot of everything and not going anywhere quickly. These are also the people who end up spending a lot of money that is not necessary. And it always breaks my heart. Like you did what? You paid who? Don't do that, right? If you can find a resource to just hook your wagon to and know they've got great testimonies and they've really provided this as a service to people and they've helped many hundreds of authors, that's perfect. The coaching piece, I think, is essential. Look, we're all here. I, I can see who's here. And some of you I know, some of you I don't know. But I already know that a lot of people here, you are great coaches in your own realm. 
And don't you love when somebody comes to you and says, look, I don't know how to do this, but I want to know how to do that. I'm interested in being very proficient at that. Can I pay you? Can you just show me how to get there? And then of course you have that, you assimilate that information, you start using it out in the world. It's like, oh, it's wonderful. Having great ease here. This is working, click, click, click. And then you know how to replicate that over and over. So it's really good to have somebody who's gonna open the door for you to fly through and find your way there quickly. The other thing that I see potential authors do is not finish their book. And that can be very regret-filled process. I know people who started on the path and they were very excited in the beginning and because they didn't have some of the tenets of proper writing, when they hit a mogul, they just gave it up. You know, the mogul can be anything from, I got too busy, I got too scared, I actually don't know how to complete this. I feel like I got sidetracked in my writing often. Like, I don't even know what's happening. They're not sure if they have something worthwhile publishing. So there's a lot of doubt in that process and a lot of sabotage and a lot of getting derailed. And the sad thing is uh, there are people out there and I know because I, I've seen them try to go it on their own and try to finish it on their own. And just as a friendly gesture, if I've checked in and said, you know, these are colleagues of mine in the entrepreneur world, and I'll say, how's the book? And this can be a year later and a year and a half later. And I just know at that point, if they don't hook their wagon to somebody who's going to help them be accountable, it literally will not happen. Because you know how that is? When you don't do something, you don't do something and the spaciousness between you and that dream and goal and that task becomes so great that it's just like, it almost goes away, but somewhere deep inside you, you still know what you know. You still know you really wanted to put that work out. And then you see people everywhere writing their book and publishing, it's like, how the heck are they doing that? So it's something you will want to. These are the things I really like to see you avoid so that you don't have fits and starts you don't give it up out of doubt or lack of knowing if you have a book that you don't get so overwhelmed with the process. So understand that those are some of the points avoid, right? So here are the, some of the things you can do right. And these are the bird's eye view pieces of writing a book. Inception. What's your idea? What speaks to you inside of you that says, I want to be born. I want to be uh, putting this work out into the world. You could be doing graphic novels. You could be doing a photography coffee table. You could be doing children's books. You could be doing a novel, fiction, nonfiction, comedy. You could be doing a self-help book. Like I said, if you wanted to do that business book, then you would have uh, more modules, more how-tos. So the first thing you wanna have, of course, is the what. What is this book about? I recommend highly that if you're having a calling from here, which is a thought process, that you modulate that. Because usually real creativity doesn't come from our heads. Our heads are full of shoulds. I should do this. And then if we're aligned with something we feel like we should do, well, the teenager part of us is going to get involved and go, I don't want to, <laughs> but you should, but I don't want to, right? You don't want to get into all that. I think the place to come from is pure passion or inspiration, something that pulls you forward. Like, like I got to write this. I've had this happen so many times. I've even had it happen where I'm on the path to writing a book. This has happened twice now. And I'm so sure that's the book. And something else reveals and says, that's great, put that aside for now, but actually that's the book. And it surprised me many times, but as soon as I get to the that's the book, I can feel the energy, that is the book. That's the book I'm excited to pursue and is excited to pursue its being through me out into the world. So understand it's really good to come from that sense of like, 
this is what I want to write. Just trust that. A book is an energy. Like anything we create out into the world, once we're a heck yes and we're aligned with it, it will inform us. So if you ever have any problems on the path, like, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to write, I don't know what to do with this character, I'm not really sure to go with this, if any of that ever pops for you, awesome. You can go into a meditation and literally talk to the energy of the book and ask it questions, and you will be amazed at how much it will tell you and the great ease to go forward. Very little to figure out. So it's an entity waiting to be born, for sure, out into the world. So know your subject, and then I like to reverse engineer. That's how I do everything almost in my life successfully. And so reverse engineer means you're here, you know the general where you're headed, what the subject is and how that's gonna manifest, but you don't know everything in between. What are those pages all about? So just go back and you're gonna bullet point. Bullet point is basically an index, right? Or it's the beginning of your book and the chapters. And if you could disseminate any information, what would it be? You, let's say 10 to 20 different subjects that you know you need to get out about this, this subject that you're writing about, or it's about your novel. Because your novel might be the arc of your story. So let me digress there for a minute and go off on that. Because anybody who writes a story needs to have an arc. Think about the best books you've ever read that you can't put down. Think about your favorite authors. And you want to emulate that. There is a way they write that compels you to keep reading. I'm reading a book right now that I'm loving. And I'm actually dog, I've, I'm always done with it. I've dog-eared the pages because in the Visible Visionaries membership uh, book writing platform, I'm gonna share it because I'm teaching people how to write a page turner. I'm teaching people how to make it so that you're reading along and suddenly there's a twist and you're like, huh, really? And you think you're, you're almost being lulled one way and then somebody throws a twist in there and you're like, oh, that was good. That was interesting. And you want to keep finding out more. So let me talk a little bit more about novels. Joseph Campbell, you may recall, talked about the hero or the heroine's journey. And he was very much referring to us right? That our life is a hero or heroine journey. And what he meant by that is that each of us, and think about this for you, each of us has something we desire. So, so maybe right now you could use your book. I really desire a book, but I've started writing and it didn't work out. And then I, I paid somebody for an online course and it was a terrible course. I didn't get my money's worth. And then I figured I'd go back out on my own and all of a sudden my kids interrupted me every five minutes. And then I started to write and I realized I was 70% through the book and I never even understood I was supposed to be typing into a formatted book. And then, and then, and then what I'm talking about, this is very low level because we could talk about much bigger subjects du jour, but the idea is that with every piece of this, there, sorry, there's somebody raking leaves really loud out there. So I hope it's not too bothersome for you guys. They'll, they'll pass on soon. We'll put that energy that they pass on. And so focus on each other. Um, the idea is the obstacles. So for all of us in our life, when you have a goal, how often do you just get to the goal? Denouement, done. Isn't that a beautiful thing? When I didn't, when I, I've done two Los Angeles marathons. I didn't just go to 26.2 miles either time. I trained for eight months. I can tell you lots of stories about what happened in those eight months. All the little pieces I had to figure out, all the obstacles that befell me that I had to find ways to get over and over and over. Maybe I got so close that I had a couple of slips and maybe some people showed up and then they didn't show up. And this is how it is in life. It is the hero heroine journey. Your book must be full of that, right? So, Almost the more angst, the more problems, 
the more wonderful a read it is. So think about your books in terms of that, because I have always said, if you're gonna write a book, write a great book. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books being published every day. Why yours? Why does somebody pick out your book? Well, yeah, you might have a back of a book jacket that reads so beautifully that if I were to be in an airport bookstore, for instance, and I'm looking at, I don't know, 1,500 books I could choose from, I look at your book and it's like, I'm compelled by what I see there. It's basically really good marketing material, right? Why your book, those bullet points. But then once I open the book, I want it to be as great as the back of your book jacket. What's in between? So if you're going to take the time, write a great book. Okay, so you've got those pieces. Now, the next thing, you've got your subject. You've written bullet points about what you want to cover. And that basically are going to be your chapters. There's a fluidity there. So you started out by saying what the chapter is. Great. Now you know what to write in chapter one. Look at your next bullet point. Now you know what to write in chapter two. A book generally is not less than 150 pages. And it generally is not more than 300, 350 pages. If you write more than that, and some do rarely, but some do, then it's a tome. And you need to be a little careful because I usually tell people if they're going down that road, break it up, make it a series of books. Much better. You have so much real estate. You have so much to talk about make it a series of books. Wouldn't that be beautiful to see a bookshelf with all your books on it, right? Sequel, adding to the information. So uh, yeah, so you're just filling in each of those chapters of information. The pages should be around 150 to 300 max. The other piece of why you don't want to go too much over a 300 page book is think about what it's like when you're holding a paperback and think about the binding. Because when you've got over 300 pages, generally you will crack a binding and the pages will come out. And that's not really lovely when you've bought a book. Right now, there are more people reading books than ever before. This is one of the big blessings of what's happened during the quarantine. So many people are turning to the arts to sustain themselves and people are just ingesting books. So it's a wonderful time for you to write. It's also a time of enormous transformation on a lot of levels. So while that's going on and you're being upgraded and shifted and changed and whatever's gone on in your life that's created a lot of difference for you, it's a beautiful time for you to dig deep and see what needs to come out of you into the world. Highly recommended. So you know your subject, you know what you're gonna be writing about generally in your chapters and off you go. Some of you might wanna research your subject. You might need to research your subject. It depends what you're writing about. And I would say at this point, you're good to write the book. Figure out where you're gonna write, figure out how you're gonna write. These things are actually really important because some people love, I mean, this is a hilarious thing to say right now, right? Some people love to go to a Starbucks. I don't think you can sit at a Starbucks right now, but some people, uh, you might, let's just say a park bench or a picnic table, or maybe there's a beautiful garden where you live or the beach and there's a place to put your laptop or you're, you're going to write longhand fine or however you're going to write. If you prefer to do it in your home, you need to find that sacred space. You need to find that place where you know nobody's going to disturb you and it's like the no disturb zone while you're doing it. Your boyfriend, girlfriend, children, animals, whatever it is, mostly animals are a contribution. But you know, if they bark a lot, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe every time somebody passes by the front door, that's not going to be helpful to you and it's going to be really distracting. Turn things off. Greatest advice I could give you. But we, we all know that because when we're trying to work as entrepreneurs, if 
social media is dinging, if text is dinging, if WhatsApp is dinging, I mean, rah, it's really gonna pull you away from your work. And the one thing that is so important for writers, and maybe some of you have experienced this, but there is nothing more beautiful than being in the zone and just having things flow out of you. And time expands, there is no time. You're just in this incredible creation zone. They talk about this with children, that if you give children crayons and put them at a table with crayons and some toys, they will have no idea what time it is. It could be dinner time and beyond, and they lose time. It becomes a complete illusion because of the zone they get into, which is a really delicious space to be. It is the true present now. And when we write, it's also sort of like a runner's high, if you've ever had that. And I, I certainly have, where you just, oh, completely one with, so beautiful, the feeling. So you want to get into a zone, which means turn off, shut down, have your tea, maybe a power object if you want that. Make sure people know, um, not during these hours. And, you know, just set up some times during the week when you're gonna write, and that's your commitment. Discipline is amazing. And as we know with anything, if you do it long enough, week after week, it becomes um, a thing you cannot imagine not doing. It literally becomes, you know, this is how I do my life. And so I see somebody's written in the chat, and I just wanna take a pause in case there is a question that I can help with here. Oh, okay. So Nicole wrote, I would like to be writing in a book format already, but I don't know where to go to find that software. Okay. Well, there isn't software. That's the great news. There is not software. Um, yeah, you just need a formatted book, a pre-formatted book. So it depends how you're going to do your book there are different pieces to this. So for instance, when I work with my clients, they will tell me the size book that they want to write. Is it eight by five? Is it seven by nine? Is it six by nine? Is it, you know, and it depends. Coffee table book will be one size. Children's book might be another size. Like books are different size. Look on your shelf. What do you like? Standard is six by nine. So, you know, if you go to a standard book, then I send them the pre-formatted template. And that's something you'll get when you join the Visible Visionaries. And yeah, just type into this template because I have a lot of people who come to me for private coaching after the fact. And I have somebody out who just signed on to work with me privately right now. And her book is completely done. And I said, um, some occasionally somebody will hire me to do editing too, and uh, proofing editing at the end of their book, at the end of the draft. And so she came to me and said, I have uh, a completed book, um, and I want to send it to you for the editing portion. You know, what will this cost me? And I said, I don't know. Is it formatted? And if so, how many pages? And she's like, no and no. <laughs> I'm like, okay, because <laughs> that's a difficult position to be in. So then I had her look at every chapter. It's, an, it's typed into eight by 10, every chapter. And I said, now you're gonna have to tally up the pages. And once we have that number, then we have to guesstimate. It's I'm not quite by two, but it's maybe 1.4 that it's gonna be. So what I'm saying is, is if she wrote, for instance, 150, eight by, typed 150 eight by 10 pages, and she wants to hand them off to me and I'm guesstimating, she hasn't told me the size of books she wants yet, but let's say it's six by nine, it goes into that. Then it's gonna be about a 280 page six by nine book. It's a big difference, right? And you need that information up front. The other reason why it's really good to write or to type into a formatted template is because like anything, right? Have you ever done this where you finish something and then you're like, oh, 
let me put it in PowerPoint or let me put it in Excel and it's all over the place. It's, there's so much back end fixing the formatting, not worth it. And so much better to type it right from the get go, right into a pre-formatted book. So that's why we do that. Cause otherwise the back end is just a lot of, a lot, a lot of work you don't need to do if you know up front how to handle that. So, you know, the simple answer basically to writing your book is you write it, you edit it, you format it, you publish it. When you write, don't edit. Like best advice I could give you as a takeaway, don't edit. And the reason why I say that is because some people make the mistake of writing and then, you know, checking and, you know, there's so much attention to what's been written that again, you're not in that flow and zone. And the flow and zone is the everything. So editing comes later. Always do it later. Thank you, Maria, and you'll get the, uh, you will also get the replay. Blessings, blessings. So you have to also decide what you wanna do with the book. Are you gonna try to get a publisher? Are you gonna self-publish? Are you going to try to get an agent? Do you even know why those are important? And all of those are available to you. I often say, if you're a first time author, it makes sense to self-publish. It's very inexpensive, it's very fast, and it's easy. Nobody's gonna tinker with your title. Nobody's gonna ask you to wait two years before it gets published. And most publishers, to be perfectly frank with you, who you will pay to get your book out there pretty handsomely, they don't have a marketing department. And that's a problem. So the biggest part of your book, besides writing it, is always gonna be the marketing. So remember to think about that and really be clear about who you're hiring to take you through the entire process. From book, to writing the book, to publishing the book, to becoming a bestseller, to book awards, to being interviewed and getting some exposure, to using all of these platforms really wisely as a viral way to get your business, your message, your storytelling out there. Maybe you're a nonprofit and you wanna use your book. There's a lot of ways to use books. So yeah, traditional publishing companies have been dropping like flies quite a bit. And the ones that remain, they, they can be a little pricey. So if you're gonna go that direction, I would highly recommend you do a ton of research. I think it's really important to be fully aware of what you're getting into and signing ahead of time if you go the publishing route as opposed to doing the uh, Amazon route or something else that's self-publishing. That's very, very easy. And when you self-publish, um, most people, unless you do like a sales job on the other end of your book, and there are companies you can hire just for sales, or just to do like funnels and all sorts of ways to get your book out there creatively. And you know, you want to budget for that too. That's different than a bestseller. So if you should decide to do that, then just know that we get royalties and that's about it. So essentially when you put your book up for let's say $17.99 for the print book, you're going to get about, $2.99, $3.99 a book. And the self-publisher will get the rest. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Why is it worth it? Because they're doing all the work for you. It's called print on demand. So every time you or anybody you know goes on Amazon, any country, anywhere in the world, and they buy a book, Amazon, I'm using Amazon as an example, Amazon literally prints a book for them. Or maybe they want five of your book, right? They print those books for them, inside cover, and of course, you know, they're perfect. And they ship them for you. They are literally doing everything for you. It used to be back in the day. We all probably grew up knowing this, that when somebody was an author, they had a garage full of books of their own, uh, boxes of their own books they had to have. They had closets full. I mean, it was, I grew up, my grandfather was, a, was very famous in the music world. 
and he used to speak all around the world. He was in the who's who of international music. So he was a, a famous speaker, a pr very prolific writer and inventor, and he wrote many, many books. And I remember growing up seeing boxes of his books everywhere. And when anybody wanted them, they had to be shipped out, sometimes one at a time, five at a time, 50 at a time. And you don't, you're not a warehouse, right? And many of us don't really live in places where we can do that. And it's a lot of work to be the shipping department, the payment department, the printing department, and all of that. So it's really nice. So when you say you're getting royalties, it's great. The idea is that often we won't get rich by a book, but I will tell you, you'll get rich by a book. You don't get rich generally monetarily. There are, like I said, there are some ways you can align yourself specifically for sales, and that's wonderful. You decide what pieces and parts of this you wanna do. But that said, regarding your book, the royalties are enough where we get rich is that when it's used wisely, the book, the notoriety around it, what kind of accolades we receive, what kind of launch and campaign we do for the publishing of the book to become a bestseller and beyond, once we're doing that, people pay attention. You know what I'm talking about, because you see on social media, there are people I know you can think of right now that you sit back and go, wow, they're being interviewed on this show and that show. Wow, they just wrote a book. Wow, they just won an award. Wow, they're on a panel. Wow, they're in a telesummit. Wow, they're speaking on stage, right? There's something going on in somebody's world. We pay attention. We want to be a part of that. That's of interest to us. So you want to be a part of that too. You want to fully align with that to happen for your book. So now I'm give, I've pretty much given you the start to finish of what that looks like, what the outline looks like for you to get from inception to the end. And if you've gleaned anything from what I'm saying right now, it, I'm being really clear, this is your time. This really is your time. People are reading more books than ever. People are hungry to write and be creative. People are wanting to say, during this time, this is what I took a stand for. Look at what I created and in three months, six months, look at what I'm able to put out into the world. And you know, because if you feel that excitement inside, if you feel that feeling of, I have a message or I have a story to tell or I have some wisdom to share or something happened that I feel like if I put this out, will make a difference. These are all the reasons that a book, an entity that comes through us calls to us to do and becomes really exciting for us to be a channel, if you will, to let it flow out of us. So I'm gonna say at this point, it would be great if you'd like to ask some questions and just post them in the chat. Let me know if there's um, anything you wanna know and happy to answer those. Um, So I'm just trying to think, there's so many, it's so quiet now. <laughs> there are a lot of, I'm trying to find some apps for you right now, actually. Because there are some great apps actually that turn things off so you can uh, completely focus while you write. And uh, I recommended that to some of my clients before. Uh, if I can pull it up, great, if not. Um, also, if you're looking into a subject, and especially if you're writing for the first time, one of the tools you can use to reference your topic and to look into current trends is a tool like Google Trends. So um, look at Google Trends and you'll find out sometimes terms that are very relevant right now you may want to adjust your language or your title accordingly. That's a great resource for you. Once you decide on your topic, going back to where we began in the beginning, 
you know, that's also your time, depending on what you're writing about, that you want to research, you want to plan, you want to research, you want to write, you know, let the fluidity of all of those sort of go through you and have a rough plan for how you're going to disseminate actually putting this out into the world. Don't use language that your readers aren't going to get. Use very plain English. And one of the things I do, both as a book writing coach, but also as somebody who takes author's books to guaranteed international bestseller, and really important, frankly, for the bestseller, is I tell them all the time, write an evergreen book. So evergreen means that if you're going to write a book now, if I go back to it in two years, is it dated material? One of the most amazing pieces about writing a book is if it goes on ad infinitum, amen, it's a beautiful thing that it can be picked up at any time and it's still relevant, it's still now. So try to be mindful of not dating yourself. And that's something you can pay attention to a little bit as you write, but definitely when you look back over the first draft after you've written it and put it out into the world. Fran, oh, Fran, awesome. Fran, I'll address that here. Um, she looks like she's writing more, but I'll just address that question. Yeah, Fran joined the uh, Visible Visionaries. And uh, yes, you'll be given the template that's a, a part of the class of what you'll receive. There's a lot of bonuses. So I'll just address that a little bit before I answer more questions. For folks who are interested in doing and knowing more, there is a really viable outlet for you. And I'm excited because I've been doing this for so many years with clients privately in group settings. And it's the first time I'm doing it like this. And I'll tell you what the setup really is. And it's a calling for me too, right? We're all changing all the time. So visible visionaries, I mean, think, first of all, you could feel the energy about that time to get your face, your voice, your art, your message, your being out there. And it really is that as visionaries, we came here to be light workers. And it's like, if not now, when, right? The exposure is right for you to receive. So on the one hand, there's the beautiful guidance so that you can get your book written. You will be working with me live. There are Zoom sessions. And Fran, I just wanna say between you and me um, privately that your email bounced. I wrote to you a couple of times. So we'll have to get that straightened out um, privately. So that's the visible visionaries and you get the energy of that. The other Zoom call, there's two Zooms a month. So the first one is specifically the coaching, moving your book ahead and all the pieces that are required and desired there so you have a really successful book and that you're writing with a lot of ease and you're being tracked and you feel accountable. The second call is the Q&A. You bring your questions. You also bring your book and you do readings. And the third part of that is occasionally I'm bringing in healers. I am bringing in healers to clear space for people, to clear issues that are going, obstacles. Anything coming up in your writing can be handled in real time. And when you know energy is energy, when you work on work, one person, it happens for all. The other thing is when we work on you for your book, it happens also that it clears out stuff in your life. Isn't that beautiful? So that's really the thing I've been called, to, so called to step into myself and I'm finally putting out into the world because I've done the strict strategy technology, let's get your book out there successfully and done very well at that. But this other piece that creates enormous ease and flow and new pieces coming in, that's what I'm super jazzed for. So there's that. And occasionally as well, and this has been very successful in the past, I'll be bringing in authors who write for a living, who are going to be talking to you. Gosh, cl past clients have gotten tons out of that because you get unique really successful tips that you don't hear about anywhere else. So for those of you who are interested, go to debbie-shinger.com slash visible visionaries so you can get your vision out there and become a published author this year. And I'll also speak a bit to another opportunity that I'm pretty tickled about, which is I am producing a dog anthology, a compilation where each author writes a chapter. There are only seven chapters left. And again, I know that people are into being creative because I've had more people come out literally in the last two weeks to talk to me and say, I really want in on this project. So it's delicious and it's a huge package, including a guaranteed international bestseller. So if you're a dog lover in the pet industry, you work with dogs, 
you know dogs, whatever, the more varied the chapters, the better. I'm also taking everybody through that process so they'll be well guided and well held. And that's Debbie D D E B B I D dot net slash anthology. And my past anthologies, people have come in from different countries. So that's really lovely as well. So those are your opportunities, definitely when you're considering moving forward and working in this market and being very successful. And so um, I'm seeing folks write to me, Michael, yes, that's what, no, Michael. <laughs> but you guys need to not do in the group chat, write to me privately and then we could talk about that stuff because I don't want to people be, People get confused. Michael is my in my dog anthology. He's a, a dog trainer in Michigan. And then uh, Fran is in the Visible Visionaries. And you can be in both, right? So these have been um, set in ways that you can have access to me at a time when I can be a resource for you to get where you're going. And at the same time, uh, at a really nice price point. It's like never been actually this low and probably never will be again. But I'm really honoring everybody and where we're at so that this is just doable. Like let's write, let's write the damn book. So there's that. So just here at the end, um, I'll talk about a couple of common mistakes that again, you should avoid is think about things like too much text or too much typing, right? Too much background, too much information. We want whatever you're putting out there to be enjoyable, to be tracking, to be easy to read. You also want to make sure your book is full of value. I mean, that's really, whether you're being interviewed on a radio podcast, whether you're being uh, writing a book or whatever kind of book you're writing, it has to be something where people feel like this is valuable. Like I'm walking away with pieces here that I haven't gotten before. And it's very illuminating to me. I would say, you know, sometimes when I was talking about the business books, don't let it be too salesy, like be really steer away from that. A book is not a sales proposition. Sometimes people do hyperlinks in their books and that's fine, but be really careful about why you're doing it or what you're linking to. Again, is it content value for the readers or is it really about what it's leading back for you? I mean, it's fine, of course, to put your own website in there. If you have really specific resources you're guiding people to, that's fantastic that have to do with you. Just don't populate your book with things like that. So there's that piece, genuine value to your readers. And, and you know, your readers also are your greatest mouthpiece. It literally is, I, I do this all the time with my friends. The, the what are you doing and getting caught up and inherently, if I'm reading something really amazing, I'll bring it up. And why? I'm almost like a salesperson for the book. And I'm having that experience. I brought this up at the beginning. And for those of you, because I see some of you have come in towards the end, enjoy the replay. It'll be coming back to you. I would watch the whole thing from beginning to end because we had a lot of discussion, a lot of rich conversation. And I would say that uh, writing a page turner is really important. It's not enough anymore with a plethora of books out there that you just write and go, oh, it's good enough. Oh, I didn't really have the energy to like, you know, have the energy, like really put something into how are you going to make it so compelling so that if I'm your reader, I'm the one in the next phone call with a friend or a group, I'm like, I am reading this book and here's why it's so amazing. And here's why you guys got to get it. And here's why I've had people gift me with books. They were reading that they loved so much. They went on Amazon, poof, literally. I've gotten print soft cover books sent to me, e-Kindle books sent to me. It's a beautiful thing. So it's really nice when somebody's loving a book and they share it with you. Yeah, so be promotion-less. Uh, promotion is more about what you do once you get to the book launch after. And it's really good that you're solving a problem, that you know who your target audience is. What is the valuable resource that you're providing that's going to move them forward? And how well do you know your topic? And if you don't, it's okay. You know, you've got plenty of work to do, research on your topic, different perspectives, commonly asked questions, what other people may be putting out 
about that, which is sometimes really good to look into. You want to do that certainly for your title to make sure you're not replicating a title. And also, what are other people missing from what they're writing that you say, oh, I could really fill that niche. There's a need there and this is not being discussed and I would like to cover that. I would be good at this. Keywords. Keywords are so important right now. The SEO for books is so huge. And there are a lot of resources for that to move you ahead. Because you wanna know that your book is getting out to your primary targets, your readership. And throughout your book, maybe there are things you can imbue it with that you hadn't considered before that aren't words. They could be visuals. They could be examples. They could be stories. They could be statistics. So out of all of those, think about those. Think about basically the musicality of your book, right? When, when you hear an artist or a band that you love, you don't hear one note. A song is not a note. It's usually theme, variation, theme. But sometimes it's much more in between. And there are harmonies and there are arias. So and there, there's a chorus and there's there's a lot going on in some of the most incredible music. Your book should emulate music. Let it be imbued with all of that. Let it be sumptuous. Let it be a feast for people who are reading. Even if it's 150 pages, let it be that. So your book is the book that's being discussed. That is the book of interest. So you're the best too, Michael. That's great. I'll be working with him. And so, you know, sometimes even uh, being very comfortable with what you're writing in, what kind of chair, what kind of table. I mean, any of us who have been on a, a laptop long enough know what it's like for your wrists to really just sort of wear out or your fingers to get tired. And, you know, ergonomics is a real thing. And it's perfectly fine to have something that's a headrest or a neck cradle. And it's perfectly fine to have a really good chair or some a really good posture, have things that are going to support you. Because what happens when you're fully physically and atomically supported is you can write longer as opposed to you physically getting exhausted very quickly. And know that if you hit a road bump, meaning you get to something else like, phew, you know, just... I don't know. I'm just feeling like, I don't know. Shift it up. Shift up energy. Shifting up energy is a beautiful thing. Go take a cold shower. Literally, actually, there's science about that. That taking a cold shower and then sitting back down to write, you be on it. You'll be fully awake and refreshed. Or literally extricate yourself from the location you're in. Go outside. If you have a dog, primo, right? It's great to walk your dog, but you don't need a dog to go out in nature, neighborhood, some kind of beautiful place, even for 20, 30 minutes. Do you know that some of the greatest minds came up with some of their most profound offerings by walking? Albert Einstein is one. Steve Jobs is another. Nicholas Tesla is another. These are people who literally would push away from whatever they were doing and go out and walk and allow this widened back state to inform them. It is about getting downloads and we're all very capable when we get out of our own way and we widen back, right? So I'll explain that because I had a friend ask me the other day about widening back, but it's one of my greatest tools because anytime we've got a problem, whether it's in life or in writing, it's this, splat. The problem's right here and we're trying so hard to like, what is that? What's going on here to try to see it? And what can I do about it? When in fact, if you will do this, and if you will do this, you just completely widen back and you have a, an amazing amount of possibilities. And when you have an amazing amount of possibilities, that means that you can see with no attachment, no need, no expectation, and it's basically the now. And in the now, we can see and perceive things we would not see and perceive when we're splatting. And so it is a wonderful thing because I say that writer's block is a myth. 
So if writer's block is a myth and everything is energy, just sometimes we hit a mogul like we do in life, don't attribute too much meaning or significance to it, shift energy. Go take a cold shower, go walk out of nature and you know, be one of those geniuses that allow themselves to just be in and, and the information will come, you'll know. The other thing is, you know, things come. I, I say have a pad with you that's so old fashioned, I know. Because a lot of people just use their iPhone or whatever smartphone you're on, cell phone, and they just dictate. And if that's your, that's your modality, that's beautiful. Use whatever works for you. That's all that matters. But the point is that ideas come. We could be driving. We could be shopping. And what is happening is our mind is off the subject. The mind is just mindless. And that's actually when things come to us. And when things come and you feel like, ah, that's exciting, write it down, put it somewhere, send it to yourself, have it or save it in your notes on your phone, wherever you put these things so that you have complete access. Man, I've been in the moment where I thought, yes, yes, yes. And usually for me, it's once it comes, it's not one, it's a torrent, right? And I'm like sitting there downloading, downloading, and I have learned because I'm so in it and I'm thinking, yeah, I can't wait till I can get to that later and later comes and I am. The disc has been wiped clean. And there's only that feeling of, oh my God, I know it was so good, <laughs> but what was it? So write those things down for your story, your book, incorporate them. Remember, write, don't edit. Edit is only after the first draft is done. So at this time, again, as I know we're winding up, does anybody have any questions about the process that they want to ask about being an author and about what's possible? Feel free to write that there. And I'm going to share with you uh, those links that I was telling you about so you know what's possible. So for those of you who are ready to rock and roll in your book, and I love, by the way, that there's so many of you, I was amazed how many people uh, signed up for these with like almost zero notice. And it just tells me how many people are very excited to put their book out there. Um, and thank you for the question. That's a beautiful question. Do you tend to have a fixed time to write daily? This is what I tend to do. I love to work with people exactly where they are. I'm not a cookie cutter person and I think recipes are generally bad. Guidelines are great, but recipes are not great because if I try to put Jeff into a modality that, you know, Anthony, that Nicole, that you, like you're all completely different beings and you're gonna vibe at a different level. So I like to meet you with where your strength is. So maybe for you, writing every day for one hour, 30 minutes is like click, 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 works, then I say do that. If you're like, that feels overwhelming. Three times a week though, yes, I can do an hour, beautiful. I once had a client who had two small kids running around the house, a huge psychotherapy business. I mean, married, blah, blah, blah. she had a ton book club. She had so much going on, but she wanted to write the damn book. I said, great. Uh, we know what your limitations are, but let's talk about what's not limited. What can you do? And she said, you know what? I can write every Sunday. And I will tell you that I helped her publish her book. And I will tell you that I helped her take her book to a guaranteed international bestseller. And now she's out there, she speaks on television and radio and everywhere. So it's like, it can be done in what works for you. Also don't limit yourself by saying, oh, I can't do that in thought form, it's overwhelming. Just like really align with something and hold yourself accountable to do it. Very important. Um, yes, so let's see what else. Um, and then I will share this. This is the one. So the one I just posted, if you look in the chat, is actually the one about the book writing platform. It's debbie-dashinger.com, Visible Visionaries. It'll be my honor to invite any of you there. Um, just, this is so funny that this is, I see what's going on. It'll be my honor to have you guys go there. This is the dog anthology. If you would like to write a chapter in the book, 
and become a published author and I take you through the whole process. It's debbied.net slash anthology. And then the book writing platform, and you can just go check it out. Some of these have videos, by the way, for free, so you can get even more information. Um, just enjoy a free video for me with even more than what I've been sharing in the first webinar and the second one. So it's debbie-singer.com slash visible visionaries. Um, I've got some people here, like Jeff, who did one of my uh, anthologies, completely different subject, but uh, he was part of my anthology, and I'm sure he can tell you that it was, it was a really amazing process. It was really beautiful and how close everybody got and how fulfilled everybody was with what was put out there. And I only do maybe one anthology a year, and, and it's really source energy that like says, it's time, and I say, really, what's the subject? Because I don't know. And so this time I was told it's about canines, it's about dogs. And so we've got only seven chapters left for that. So if you want in, you definitely want to book it because it's, it's going to be happening soon. I'm very excited about that. And um, what other questions do you have? Anything else just wrapping up here at the end that you might want to ask about your process or getting your book out there or what your possibilities are? And I'll just tell you that you can do this. It is like anything where it's a process that's broken down into chunks. And that makes it all so easy and sustainable. I think any of us, it's like my marathon example in the beginning. If you look at doing 26.2 miles, it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. But if you know you have eight months of training, and I'm not saying a book takes you eight months. The marathon took me eight months. But if I know I've got eight months, that if I break down that 26.2 miles and the first week I'm doing one mile and the second week one and a half miles and then I jump to three and by the time I get to the marathon date, I am so trained. I have all the right equipment and sneakers. I know the food to eat. I know the outfit to wear and my body is ready. And I did it in chunks to get me there so that I was gonna be successful. And that's exactly what happens when you're writing a book. You know what your subject is, you wanna know generally how many pages, what kind of chapters you're gonna have in between, and then you set yourself up for success. Where am I gonna write? How am I gonna write? How often am I gonna write? And just write, damn it. Don't edit, just let it flow out of you and trust the process. Then when you're done with the first draft, you can look back at it and say, I did this. Now it's time for a little tweaking and editing. So understand again, that when you get 60% through what you're doing, what you're writing, that's when you start thinking about your marketing launch. You must have a back end to your book. You don't just put out a book and think, oh, people will find me. You must have a whole launch strategy post book because none of us wants to put that labor of love out there and then have a book sit in digital land and not be read. You write, you're writing to be read. You are writing to be a writer. You are an author. If you can say anything to yourself over and over again, say, I am an author. I am an author. I have something to say. I have something to put out there. And so it is. And so it is. And so it's been an honor and a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for joining me. I. Um, I really love talking about this and I love that, you know, as people who came here with great purpose at a really auspicious time and it couldn't be more interesting as far as I'm concerned spiritually than ever. This is, this is the launching in a lot of different ways. This is the time when all new choices can be made. What did you come here to do that you haven't been doing? Who did you come here to be that you haven't been being? Because if you were powerful enough to shut down the entire world, just saying, and you were powerful enough to shut yourself inside for this amount of time, what is it that you had to face or look at? Why did you need to be still? What is the message you haven't been putting out there? What are the words that have been wanting to come out of you like a song? And how much are you willing to do that? I know for me, I've looked at things and I feel like I've created pretty big, but it's like, yeah, yeah. 
Some of those things I've put off that I was too busy to do, no more, not ever again. There is no more busy, there's only now. So be that, do that, thank you too. And it's really been a blessing. If I can be of service to you going forward and you would like to know more, go to debbie-shinger.com. If you're interested in being guided to write your book and publish it this year, go to debbie-shinger.com slash visible visionaries and join us there. And that is a private group membership, very affordable. And if you would like to write a chapter in a dog anthology and be guided the entire process, it will be my honor and pleasure. Go to debbied.net slash anthology. And most important, write the damn book. It's your time. Thanks for joining me today. <laughs>